Hi friends, this is Sarah from Crafting and Relaxing. Welcome, thank you so very much for joining me. As you may have noticed, Beth from Bourbon Creek Crafts and I are doing a collab that's called Bringing Back Basic Gray. We are basic gray paper fans. Basic Gray switched over and they do fabric now. They stopped making paper years ago, but many of us have some in our stash. I picked up a bunch of these at an estate sale. I bought some on eBay before that. These are at least, I've had these about a year or so. These were before. And then the others were various sources and originally from my stash. What I thought I would do is show you some of what's in my stash and you can leave me comments down below about what you'd like to see me work on in the collab. Some things I may just hoard forever, but other things maybe you'll tell me which collections you'd like to see, or if you wanna see cards. Uh, I have a mini album kit, so I'll just show you some stuff and you let me know down below. I have these papers in date order. This one is 2008, and this one's called Archaic. And this one might feel better in the fall. It might not be a paper that you're going to be excited to use in March. So we could wait. Or you may say, yes, let's use it because it's a little grungy. It's a little bit, you know, grunge. And I like how they do their paper pads. They put the two in, the row, in a row. Oh, look. Little dinosaurs. And fun geometrics. And some of these pads are used. They have pieces out of them. Some of them are untouched. It's a mix. So this one has a lot of green for you green lovers and definitely that aged vintage look. Ooh, that one's kind of bright and fun. That one's kind of cool. So that is archaic and I'll just flip through some of these. I think you pink lovers are gonna love this one. This is called Sultry. And again, 2008, cultivate refreshing projects with Sultry's Botanical Garden of Urban Florals. Urban Florals, Oh, look at that. You know, I'm not a pink lover, but I love a good floral. That's kind of an interesting pattern. That's gorgeous, even if it's not blue. Some pink, and I think it's black. It could be chocolate brown, though. This one looks like it's more chocolate brown. There's another neat floral. And these are single-sided papers in these six by six. So what you see is what you get. That one's a little crazy. This is like a paisley wow. Oh, that one's fun. Some of these might lend themselves to some fussy cutting too. This one's a soft background. Can you see that? And then some fairly solid greens and pinks and browns, just aged looking, a little bit grungy. This one I gave you a peek at last time. I do really like this one. Wisteria paper pad. Ooh, look at that. I was gonna say it's a lot of purple and green, but that is what I'd call a grungy blue. Okay, this one you know at some point I'm going to use. It's just a matter of if you'll see it or not. Love that. Oh my gosh, look at this delicate little floral. Their patterns were just knockouts. And the dragonflies. Mm, I don't know what this is. Just a neat little pattern. Oh my gosh, look at that blue and purple floral. I'm in all day long. This one too, love it. And then almost a solid, but it has a black pattern on it lightly. Hmm, this one's okay, but you have to have those to get your contrast. Light pale floral. Ooh, that one's really geometric. Touches of purple in there. That one's really mellow compared to the rest of the pad. Same here. You need some of that though for your eye. And that's the end. So that's Wisteria. This one looks fun too. This is Olivia. Pretty in pink, gorgeous in green, wonderful in white. Oh my gosh, I love the dots. And their papers just, they just have interesting patterns. A lot going on. Whoa. And again, they have a touch of, you can see a little bit of touch of grunge up there, even in their plaids. It's 
a cute one. That's a busy one. That would be a trick to use. Ooh, that's fun. Not a very complex pattern, really, for them. That's a neat one. You could almost take that one in strips and use it for borders. That's a fun one. And then a little tiny pattern. So this one has birds and bunnies in it. Maybe like it was a baby pattern. Super cute. I didn't read the full descriptions. This one says sleep baby in various languages. Really cute. Looks like cats, bunnies, birds, little dots. I don't know that I'd make baby cards, but it would make gorgeous cards. Hearts with flowers in them. And then some solids. I like that they have these solids in the back to kind of help you layer your pat your cards or your project. Corresponding solids. This one you saw last month. We could do more with that or we could set it aside. This one is a little bit harder to work with than Paper Cottage, I think. It's J'adore. It just has so much going on, so many different colors. It does have some cut-aparts in it, but they're not really ones I love. I mean, I think as far as basic gray, and I've used this quite a bit, but I don't know that this is my favorite paper pad ever, and it's pillaged a bit. See, they're junk journalish maybe but not really ones I'd use on cards. I think I have cut that one out and used the sentiment you are the sweetest but it's a lot of love which makes sense for the title of the pad. That is it for my six by six stash so that's it one two three four five six. Then I have a little bit of just other stuff. I had this chipboard album that I picked up. I think I might have picked it up at Scrap PDX just last year. I'm not sure. Basic Gray did a lot of chocolate brown. I think these letters probably came from them because they did a lot of chocolate brown instead of black. And this was, I'll tell you, when I got this kit, it was chocolate brown. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it says dark chocolate. I painted it with crazy paints because I was testing out some of those color shift and other paints. So it's a mini album. It would probably be fun with some papers that picked up these tones. And we don't have a lot of color choices, but there might be something in here that would work. There might be something in here and I could put together a mini album. So that's something that's, it's in the basic gray stash. I just don't know if you're interested in that or if, and that'll probably take me a while. So that wouldn't necessarily be, you can vote for it, but it's not gonna be next month. Then I have some 12 by 12. And what I was thinking is if you wanna see 12 by 12, I'll have to really think it through because I have to be a miser. These two don't actually match, but they're out of the same collection. It could be pulled off. This was a similar time and these are single sided. This was, I think these are older because the 2010 was double-sided. I could be wrong on that. This one's also double-sided and it's 2012. And these are some letters and similar color palettes that I could use together. And I thought these little basic gray alphabet stickers would be fun on their basic gray metal art tags. And I could use those on cards or in a journal. Again, I don't know where they came from. And maybe these, because they're such large letters, these might go more on a 12 by 12 or some other project. And I like the back of this paper. I've used it quite a bit. So that's what I have in 12 by 12. Oh, this, this is one of the ones I like. The collection was Marjolaine, I think. And that might be all I have. <laughs> that's it probably not going to do a 12 by 12 layout with that because I'm kind of obsessed about having a matching double page layout so unless it's the front page in an album or the last page but I loved the blue and green and the complex patterns I have used basic gray on a lot of my 12 by 12 pages in the past because it came in my kits oh I do have this out of the same collection so I have one more piece. I'm pretty sure that's the same collection. Then let me show you one of my favorites. Oh my gosh. 
<laughs> I'm not going to be able to impress you with it because there's not very much of it left. This is the collection is Sugar Rush. And I know you're probably thinking you, but I love it. I think what I love about it is the fun florals, the polka dots, this periwinkle-ish blue-gray right here. This is the only sticker I have left from my entire sticker sheet, and this is all the paper I have left. And this polka dot paper, I just loved it. This I may just hoard forever and ever and not chop up, or maybe I'll put at least one piece of it in a journal of mine, maybe as a flip out or something, because paper that makes you happy, you should keep some of it. You shouldn't just make cards and give it all away. Then I am 99% sure, and those of you who've been around a while can set me straight if I'm wrong, that all of these letters are basic gray too. So there's the chocolate chipboard ones, and then I think these are the same exact idea, but I bought them in white because you can ink them up. So you can take, back in the day, you would use your cat's eye ink pads, these little guys, this size, and you could ink them up. Today we have a million different ink things. So instead of having to buy all the colors, you just bought the white and you could make whatever color you wanted for your scrapbook layouts. These are more scrapbooking. For cards, if I wanted to put sentiments on my cards, I'd probably use these because these are pretty thick and pretty large. Let me know if certain products in here interest you and you would like to see them used in upcoming videos because uh, I'm not going to use everything and I probably, even if you pick a pad, it's not going to be like a smash that small paper pad type thing. I'll use some of it and then maybe I'll hoard some of it for another decade. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you're taking time for crafting and relaxing. Bye-bye.